Hello and welcome to episode number seven of the BSB show and yet again we have a special guest, Mr Iden, welcome, thank you for being with us. Christian will magically transform into our second special guest later in the show but you've got to stay with us to find out what it is or you can cheat and have a little look at the description below. Anyway, we're going to talk about Brands Hatch, what happened at Brands Hatch last time out at the Bennett's British Superbike series and then we are going to talk about what's going to happen at Thruxton and we've got a couple of features lined up for you as well, so don't go anywhere. Good. All right, Mr. Iden, thank you again for joining us. Uh, Oxford Products Racing Ducati this year, and it started reasonably well, but you had your best weekend, didn't you, really, at Brands Hatch? No, it didn't start reasonably well at all. It started pretty well. All right, to be, honest be brutally you. honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to massage your well, thank you. Said. <laughs> I appreciate you being kind. No, um, yeah, I um, came into this season with like really high hopes. I think the whole team did, a lot of people around it, um, and, you know, not... I think for all the right reasons, last time I was on a Ducati, we fought for the championship down to the last day of the season, two years on the trot. Um, the team had some really good years with Tommy and I felt confident coming into the new season that I could do a really good job. And uh, yeah, for the first few rounds it was super difficult. Um, but now we're starting to get a handle on things and pushing more towards the front. How was Brands? Sum up Brands. It was a bit of a topsy-turvy weekend in terms of weather, wasn't it? But you didn't seem to mess with you too much in terms of your results. For, uh, wait, second, third and fourth, but not in that order. Yeah, um, it's the first fully wet session we'd had actually this year. So, yeah, pretty crazy that round six is the first time we're on yeah. a wet session. And um, it was qualifying was our first wet session and I straight away made an error. I opted for the hard wet. Um, a few of the other guys did and the other guys that did really struggled on it. and. I should have pulled in, but I stuck with it, mainly because I'd made the call, so I figured I'd make it work, and I didn't. So I ended up 11th in the session um, in qualifying. And every, every, um, every round this year, my qualifying has been horrendous, um, which uh, the first few rounds, pretty much my qualifying pace was my race pace, so it wasn't good enough anyway. But for probably the last three rounds, my qualifying pace has been below the position that I think I can be in in the race. So certainly for uh, not killing Snetterton, I was able to run the pace of the leaders, but I wasn't sort of in that group. And uh, I really wanted to be up there at Brands from qualifying onwards, just because I knew I could, I could run with them, and I didn't again, so it was like a bit of a kick. But the, in the wet race, my bike felt so good. Um, everywhere apart from Clearways, Clearways was a disaster, but only for like 200 meters of track, so everywhere else it felt so good. And um, yeah, just it, it was a shame we didn't go full distance because uh, Leon's bike was dropping some fluid and then we got red flagged and then the, the, the race was called. So I think I could have won it. It's really easy to say that because the race didn't go full distance. Mm. But yeah, I definitely feel like I had the pace and I was kind of biding my time a little bit. I had some pretty substantial visibility issues during the race. Um, but I kind of learned to ride with them because they happened from pretty much lap three onwards. Um, so yeah, I felt good. It's sort of a shame not to have had the full opportunity for the race to go full distance, but it was our first podium of the year, so I was pretty happy to take it. Mm -hmm. Your kind of conditions as well, though, that race. I don't want to say it, but <laughs> as soon as it started raining, I was like, this is Christian's race. I was like, this has got Ido written all over this. Yeah, I mean, I don't... It's funny, like, I don't... People say, oh, you enjoy the rain. I definitely don't enjoy the rain. Yeah. Um, you just feel like you're going to crash it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't dread the rain. So I think, there's, I think there's certain riders that dread it. As soon as you get into your head that it's the same for everyone, then it's the same mm -hmm. for everyone, you know? You just ride to the conditions. Sure, you have a lot more moments, but genuinely the bike felt so good underneath me um, that I was, I was actually, yeah, that time I was enjoying it. Um, I felt like I was the master of the bike. And those conditions are a bit like that. When you, when you get those conditions, if you don't feel the bike underneath you, it's horrible. Mm -hmm and I could feel the bike and the, the bike felt really good and yeah I just enjoyed the race it was it was nice to feel that sort of at one with my bike and yeah it is a shame it didn't go full distance but 
it was also kind of hard for everyone because we haven't, apart from like Silverstone test, we've done a bit of wet running. Mm. But apart from that, nobody's been out in the wet. Yeah. So um, I think there was a lot of teams and riders sort of maybe stumping for settings that they weren't quite sure on or like Just guys. Just them out of thin air. Yeah, yeah, guys that haven't been, been on those bikes, you know, guys that switch teams perhaps like that haven't ridden those bikes, say the year before or whatever, mm -hmm. in the wet was maybe a bit harder for them. But um, brands in the wet previously has been pretty treacherous, um, but all the new tarmac was really good. So it, it, the few bits where the tarmac was older, it, was, it wasn't as good, but yeah, by, by tarmac in most of the track, it's, um, it's got away from some of the really bad corners, like bottom bend was always horrendous for it. And no, it was the, the, the grip level was, was pretty good. Can I touch on what you said a bit earlier on about uh, your qualifying pace? Uh, I, I appreciate there's no magic wand or magic answer, but uh, can you put your finger on it? What, what, what's, what's going on? In, in terms of setup or, or, or headspace? I've, I've or? always been not the best qualifier. Qualifying's never been my thing. I, I ride better when I race. I feel a lot more comfortable when I race. Um, I actually feel happier. I feel when, when there's a load of stuff going on around me, I'm actually far more calm. I see things like quicker, you know, like my spidey senses kick in. <laughs> you know, like time slows down sort of thing. I, yeah. I feel that, whereas... <laughs> Yeah, in qualifying, my spidey senses always desert me, and it's like, like the opposite. I'm like, everything's coming at me too fast. <laughs> so I usually, I, I tend to go quicker in the races than I do in qualifying, which is like the opposite to most of the other guys. So it's always a bit of a frustration for me, but that's my own fault, you know. It's me that needs to improve in that area. But I don't know if it means that I'm, I don't know if it means that I'm bad in qualifying or that I'm good in racing. It doesn't. I don't know which way around to think of it. Um, but yeah, generally my qualifying pace is what I can bust out all the time, you know, every lap. So um, there's a lot of guys that sort of can bite the screen for one lap and that, that doesn't seem to be my strong point, but it's yeah. something that I'd like to work on, but I've been at it long enough that I should, I should have it nailed. Um, but there has been a few qualifying sessions where actually there's been outside factors just hitting traffic at the wrong time, or like I said, the hard tire at, mm -hmm. at the last race and stuff like that. So yeah, there's been a few times when there's been a bit of a something, a bit of an excuse, but Generally, qualifying is not my strong point, and I'm, I'm, I'm usually happy. I just, I always say to the team, like, I just want to go racing. Mm. You know, like, I just want to get in the race now. And by, by the time we've done some free practice, I'm fed up with it. I sort of want to. I'm <laughs> just want to get race. your elbows. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Good. And 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 you mentioned uh, well, we talked about uh, your sort of qualities in the wet. Do you think that is stemmed from your ability to control well, when you're know, back in your sort of supermoto days? in terms of the bike sliding about deliberately so. Do you, has that any relevance or resemblance to, to wet conditions on a superbike? I appreciate it's opposite ends of the spectrum almost. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think, it, I think you just get used to a bike. You, you're less nervous of a bike moving about underneath you. So you can almost use it a little bit. So yeah, on the superbike, in the wet, you don't want it moving. Like you really don't. But when it happens, you're almost quicker to react to it or less hesitant about it happening. So it doesn't really bother me too much if it does. So. Yeah, I think you just get used to it. And also, I think you learn to ride in a, in a lower grip situation. You know, from coming from supermoto, you, you're used to being on dirt with slicks on or being on a dirty track or being on a go-kart track that don't tend to give the same amount of feet, grip back. So you're almost, it's almost easier to find the grip. But it's kind of weird because like, at the weekend, I was really suffering for, from low grip in the dry in certain parts. And it was weird how in the wet, my bike gave me so much grip in those places. It was almost like it flipped, you know. We were complete opposite. Complete opposite. And I was like, to the team, you know, we need to learn from that. There's something, there's something it's giving me in the wet, mm. but it, it absolutely it doesn't give me in the dry. So, um, yeah, I, th I think the supermoto stuff does help the motocross mm. stuff. Um, but it's just been, it's just been more comfortable with the bike moving underneath it. If you've always done tarmac stuff, you basically have it drilled into you that it shouldn't move and if it does move then you, you're close to being on your ear, which is true, but um, yeah, not always. Before we move on to the <coughs> Sunday races, races two and three, I, I, I have a question which I, I think might um, help a lot of people who are watching and certainly for me, but how the hell do you tell where the grip is from a, from a slick tyre to a wet tyre, to a properly heavy treaded tyre? How do you go, how do you take a 240 horsepower <laughs> superbike onto a certain go? I'm all right, I've got wet tyres on, I'm fine. Uh, where, where, how do you compute that? Um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird actually, because 
a lot of it's like seeing what your people around you are doing. You kind of like you go first, no after you. <laughs> like qualifying was the first time we'd any, we'd any of us had ridden in the wet, and I went out of pit lane behind uh, Brooksy, and he was really hesitant, and I felt a lot better. But I was like, oh, actually, maybe, maybe you've been hesitant for a reason. Maybe you know something I don't. So then you sort of like <laughs> second guess yourself. But then, yeah, it's. Um, <clears throat> You just get a feel for it. You just get the bike just talks to you, hopefully. And if it does talk to you, then you know, you, sort of, you do it long enough yep. that you sort of have an, an understanding. You sort of just feel for it. I'm the sort of rider that does like, even in the dry, as well as the wet, I sort of like to have it starting to move because then I know, I know where the bike is underneath me. I've got a little bit of a trait to just touch the throttle early in the dry coming out of corners. That's not to accelerate or do anything. It's just to understand that is the bike on the limit ready to move or not. So you do little things to try and understand what's, what's there. Amazing how you guys compute so quickly. <clears throat> I mean it's your job in it so it's like it's amazing how a bricklayer lays bricks. It's <laughs> the same. Yeah, yeah appreciate that. <laughs> Should we move on Bertie? Yep. Two laps. So we've got two races on the Sunday didn't we? What happened there? Christian? Uh, well Christian got another podium. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah another, in the dry as another well. Another podium in the dry. Um, so I was on pole for that one. It's the quickest lap of the race yeah. in the wet. Um, we'd had all right pace in the dry but not like not awesome. And um, We'd had such a big downpour on the Saturday night that the grip had just gone away. So mm -hmm. I was I was out front and I was doing like 26.5s, which is a really sl comparatively really slap, slow lap time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, flip, I'm gonna have to do something. Like I need to up the pace. But then no one was passing me, so I was thinking, oh, do I need to up the pace? So I think the grip level had just it just washed all the rubber away. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, Bridewell came through and he had more pace than I had. Um, hate to admit it, it's very annoying, but yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he had more than what I had. And um, Where? In a straight line or? No. Corner speed? Um, we are struggling a, a little bit with my bike in, in, in outright speed for some reason, which we're looking into. Um, but no, just it was just nibbling a little bit everywhere. He just had more than me, you know. Mm. He was riding better than I was and I think he had his package a little bit better than I had. And, you know, fair play, you got to give credit, so. Um, yeah, he was just able to just sneak away like a tenth, two tenths yeah. a lap, and it was just like just enough, just over, enough over a course of three laps. And then uh, to yeah, I had quite a big it. group of riders behind me, so I was busy sort of like defending my position yeah. as well, uh, which I managed to do. So it was one of them races where I finished second. I could have finished eight, you know, like mm. it was. Yeah. They were all on me, so I just did the best I could and, and managed to to bring home a podium, which was really cool. And then yeah, strangely, the last race actually I felt the best that I've had done in the dry the whole time. Um, Managed to get in the lead of it again. Um, I wanted to lead, which is a good sign for me. It's a good sign for anyone. If you feel comfortable enough to lead, then that's cool. And I actually wanted to. I was, I was. If anyone came through, I always wanted to make the move back and, and lead. I felt confident and comfortable. The pace was a little bit better. Um, and then Tommy came through, probably with about eight to go. And I thought, right, well, this is like the same thing that happened four four hours ago. So we'll see if the changes we've made are better. And, he did two laps where he didn't go. He was a bit slow and that worried me a little bit because I knew there was a couple of guys behind. And then he put the hammer down and didn't go anywhere. So I was like, right, I've got a better yeah, package underneath me. Like, here we go. I really fancied the chances of the win at that one. And then uh, instead of doing that, Glenn got me and Ryan got me. And then we had a bit of a battle. And uh, unfortunately, with like two, I don't know if it was two or three laps to go, I folded the front real big at Paddock. Managed to save it, but I basically white lined it all the way down and just lost like a second, second and a half, and they were gone. So it was it was annoying because that was the best I felt, and it was the worst result of the weekend. Yeah. Um, but that's racing, you know. You've got to, no matter how fast or whatever, you've got to go. You've also got to race and play the game, and yeah, just that one mistake cost you, wow. cost me. So um, still a good weekend, you know. We've had we've had a lot of rubbish weekends for for the last two, three rounds. We've been had the pace, but not been up there. Um, or not as far up as what I'd like to be. And then finally we sort of showed the pace and ability to lead races, to be at the front, to show that I've, you know, we're still here. Mm -hmm. Should we what? pause there and have a look at some highlights? Yeah, yeah. And then we'll come back. Uh, here are the highlights from Brant Hatch. Tommy Bridewell was on pole position for the first wet race in 675 days in Bennett's British Superbike because the lights went out and he got the whole shot too into turn one ahead of Ryan Vickers and Danny Kent who then on the cutback managed to go through into P2. A good start also for Leon Haslam who was fourth ahead of O'Halloran and Glenn Irwin. On the approach to Surtees on the first lap, Ryan Vickers 
then moved up into second place, just squeezing underneath Danny Kent. Further back, Jack Kennedy made a move on Glenn Irwin. There was a big moment for Tommy Bridewell here. And soon he was to lose his lead as they made their way through Sterling. And lovely move from Ryan Vickers meant that he went into P1. Danny Kent then went through as well. Vickers had a warning from the rear end at Surtees. As we got up to the halfway point in the race, Jack Kennedy then pushed his way through on Tommy Bridewell and Jason O'Halloran also to move Tommy Bridewell out of the top six. Storm Stacy then went through on Glenn Irwin after he had a twitch from the rear coming around Clark Kerb. And then there was some big issues on the exit of Surtees. A moment here for Peter Hickman. Out front, it was Vickers and Kent gunning for glory as they were looking for their first BSB victories with Iden in third. But there was drama. Smoke coming out of Haslam's machine. He was given the black orange flag. The red flags were out as well. And the race was halted and declared. Half points awarded. It's a win for Ryan Vickers ahead of Danny Kent and Christian Iden. Race two of the weekend at Brands Hatch saw Christian Iden start from pole position, but Danny Kent got the whole shot on the approach to Paddock Hill Bend with Ryan Vickers in third and Jason O'Halloran in fourth place. A good start also for Jack Kennedy as they went uphill in towards Druids. Christian Iden made his move on Danny Kent to take the lead of the race. The two Yamahas were scuffling and there was contact between Glenn Irwin and Lee Jackson at Druids as Irwin tried to get through. Further back, a three bike collision between Franco Bourne, Tom Neve and Tito Rabat ended their race. Out front, Vickers and Kent were challenging for the leading positions. Jack Scott unfortunately fell and went out and Dean Harrison also went out of the race. Danny Kent took the lead, but then we went under safety car rules because of the air fence damage for the Dean Harrison crash. But when the safety car pulled in, Danny Kent resumed out front, leading the way at Brands Hutch with half the race to go ahead of Christian Iden. But Iden and Ryan Vickers in second and third were closing on Danny Kent. Both of the beer monster Ducatis had made progress and made moves into turn one. Tommy Bridewell slowly but surely picked his way through the pack. Moving up to third here to go ahead of Ryan Vickers as Iden went back through on Danny Kent. And then making light work of the riders ahead of him as well. Going through on Danny Kent to move up to second and Vickers then as well moved up to third place ahead of Kent. Jason O'Halloran at this stage was in fifth place but cut adrift from the podium chase. And this was the race winning overtake into Hawthorne Bend. Tommy Bridewell going through on Christian Iden. There was drama for Leon Haslam. A gear linkage issue meant that he wasn't able to finish the race. The final podium position went to Danny Kent with this move on Ryan Vickers, but no one could catch Bridewell winning his first race of the weekend here at Brands. Tommy Bridewell was on pole position for the final race of the weekend at Brands Hatch, but again, it was Danny Kent that got the whole shot as they dropped down into turn one, but drama from the off <laughs> as the rear wheel of Ryan Vickers caught the front wheel of Josh Brooks and he went off into the gravel. At Druids, Ryan Vickers took a lovely line to move up into third place as they all jostled for position. Kyle Ride moved up to third. Christian Iden then challenged Danny Kent for the lead to go into P1. But Kyle Ride ran into trouble. A gear linkage issue meant that it was the end of his race. Through the pack was coming Ryan Vickers after what happened into turn one. He picked off Jason O'Halloran and soon made his way through towards Leon Hazem as well. And Danny Buckham was having a better ride of things as well. Glenn Irwin got through and passed Danny Kent to move into podium contention. Ryan Vickers was pulling off some lovely moves into Sterling at this stage up into four. Charlie Nesbitt clawing his way up into the top ten as well. This move on Danny Buchan into Druids. Out front, a proper battle then unfolded. Ryan Vickers again into Sterling, moved ahead of Glenn Irwin, but Irwin returned the favour into Clearways. They were side by side on the start finish straight in the battle for third, but soon Christian Iden was going to come under some trouble as well. Tommy Bridewell went through on Iden. Likewise, Irwin moved up to third ahead of Ryan Vickers with Danny Kent still in the frame at this stage. And then this was the move from Glenn Irwin on the approach to Surtees. Going through on Christian Iden. And then a move on Ryan Vickers as well as he tried to hunt down Tommy Bridewell. 
On the final lap of the race, Ryan Vickers was trying everything. They'd moved closer and closer to Tommy, but were not able to get past. The chequered flag came out. Bridewell victorious. The double here at Brands on Sunday ahead of Irwin and Ryan Vickers. Mega racing all weekend long. More of that for the rest of the season. We can guarantee it. All right, so hot and not then. Who did... Uh, well, Bertie, you Well, before up. we get into that, I've got one more question Oh, yeah, go on. You. So, I was very... I'm not surprised, but I am very surprised that the lap record is still held from 2017 at the Brands mm -hmm. GP circuit. Do you think that's because back then the, the pace was so hot, or do you think it's literally because it's probably no one's really ever going to beat that time a 24 8 round there is pretty quick and really with tyre development as it's improved you would think that the lap record is going to get beaten and it still hasn't so you followed josh out the pits wasn't it yeah no, it's like it's a hard one to answer because it's a strange one it was last year or the year before last year i think it was a lot of lap records fell mm. um, but just not there but just it's not just there so yeah, and then, so last year was even more of a strange one because there was no reason everyone basically jumped by half mm -hmm. a second to three quarters of a second, and you just don't do that. Not The whole field doesn't find that overnight. Mm -hmm. We hadn't had any, any tyre development that they told us about, um, but I just actually don't think that was true. I think there was a new things happened with the tyres, mm. but they didn't have a different code for them. Yeah, yeah. Because you, the whole field doesn't just take a step like yeah. that you know yeah maybe a rider changes bike and they make a step or maybe something happens and somebody takes a back step whatever it is but the whole field basically jumped at least mm -hmm. half a second in pretty much every track um i mean we just touched on it there track conditions is the main thing that holds mm -hmm. you back and it's not even you don't necessarily feel any different or massively different if the track's good or bad because everyone goes around it mm -hmm. using the most of what they've got so that's mm -hmm. it yeah a, 24, whatever it is, is fast. I mean, right, I've, yeah. I don't think I wouldn't. I think I've been way faster than what I went at the weekend. I'm sure most mm -hmm. guys on the grid. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's, so it's not. It's not a case of the the level isn't high because it's the same guys. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that whatever gives, whatever the track gives you back, and the rules are, have been pretty stagnant now for a while. Mm -hmm. So it's not that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's just the track condition. I'm, I'm surprised actually because we've had some new tarmac at Brands. Mm. Um, that's that's recently. the one thing that made me surprised. So yeah, because yeah. when you know when I walk the track, I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. you know it's going to be fast. You know I was expecting certainly. I guess we also didn't get that jump because when normally the jump happens in qualifying and the jump obviously it was mm. wet, so that jump didn't happen. I was certainly expecting 24s in, yeah, in yeah. qualifying. Yeah, it was, I was. It was low to mid 25s or mid 25s in free practice, mm. so you'd expect a jump of half a second. Um, so yeah, I would expect 24s would have happened. Mm. And then, yeah, all the rubber was washed off and then basically it starts again. Yeah, it starts so, again on a, on a yeah. race day. So by the time we got back to race three, we were kind of at what it would have been on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you went there on the Monday and raced again, be everyone right. probably, probably would have found another half a second, not through doing anything other than mm. the track gives you some back. Mm. Okay. Uh, not. Hot or not, yeah. Hot or not. So, shall I start? Because I think Leon Haslam had a bit of a bum deal, obviously, with his engine, and then he did DNF in the second, and then about eighth, wasn't he? So he really needed that extra momentum for his for his championship because he was kind of it was all quite tight, wasn't it, championship wise? And now, yeah, uh, yeah, real, yeah, real struggle for Leon this weekend. Obviously, the problem in the first race. <clears throat> don't really want to touch too much on that. It's a bit of a touchy subject with some people, but <laughs> yeah, it was just a, 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 a you know a bit of a dire weekend for him, really. Um, I think the hottest man's probably this man sat next to us. Danny Kent was up there as well. Danny I, Kemp, I, I Danny was, Kemp I was, was really surprised, actually. Yeah, Danny actually was... Um, I don't think he was ever out of the top four in any mm. session in all the free practices, mm -hmm. and that shows someone who's just feeling at one with yeah. his bike. Yeah. Danny has been riding really well all year, actually. He's, he's um, Obviously, I was teamed up with him mm. last year, and um, so I know him quite well, and I don't think his confidence was anywhere near as high last year, and he sort of always needed to... A tow last year to sort of do his lap times and this year he doesn't he goes off out on his own he obviously feels really good with his bike brands actually is probably the, the best of the weekends that he's had in terms of just yeah. being, going out doing it always in the top four or five yeah yeah really impressive danny was obviously bradwell at the moment's completely on song yeah <clears throat> that's an obvious one yeah um and then yeah max cook and, and ne charlie nesbitt both had really good weekends um Especially considering it was a wet race, they finished tenth and eleventh, I think. I don't know which way round, but wet race. They're rookies, mm -hmm. all that horsepower, and it's I, I, they, that's an impressive result for me. Tenth and eleventh for those two. Yeah, especially probably Max because mm. um, Charlie's 
ridden big bikes in the wet on wets. Whereas Max, I don't think, mm. I don't know how much. No, I don't think he's ever. I don't think he's maybe probably ever ridden. Maybe yeah, not much yeah. Uh, and go on then, who else? Anybody else who sort of stood out as, as particularly not having a good weekend or should have done Kyle, better? Kyle had a difficult weekend, yeah. but there was a lot of other factors involved in that sort of mm -hmm. thing. I think he didn't really find his feet, his feet. early on in the weekend, mm -hmm. and then when he did, because he was fast, his, uh, his gear lever broke, and mm -hmm. just things happened. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he had every chance of winning a race on mm -hmm. the last one. And, uh, yeah, when his, when his form was there, he sort of got took. And even the second race, I think his grid position held him back. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It, his weekend was more difficult than what we've seen from him um, but it, it's so it stems and it snowballs so quickly in BSB you know mm. like once it starts out difficult it's really difficult really to recover to get it, it back right. yeah roll it back really difficult to recover mm. the weekend per race per weekend or same no per weekend per weekend because because the race the, the following race is new your, your grid position is determined by the race before so like it can just be such a snowball mm. effect and you know, if you're on a bad one and you're coming through, by the end of it, you think, oh, I wish there was another race. Yeah. And I think Kyle probably had that sort of sensation. Yeah. Are you like, a fan of that rule, by the way? Do you like having a, you know, he who is fastest is up there on the grid? Yeah, I don't mind it, to be fair. I don't know. I have, I have no other solution, by the way, but yeah, I'm just going to put it out there. Is... I mean, it's better for me because I'm bad at qualifying, so it means <laughs> that I'm not stuck to flipping fifth row <laughs> for every race. So, you buggered uh, for race one, but two and three, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah, for me, I went from 11th for the first race to P1 for P1, the second yeah. race it makes an awful a massive yeah, difference. Big difference the only thing that's difficult is if um, so like at Silverstone I fell foul of it I got took out before we'd done one flying lap which is the worst times to get took out because your lap time determines and your first mm -hmm. flying lap is always the worst so I was basically last on the grid after for that mm. if you get took out or you, if you don't finish the first lap you drop I think one or two rows, mm. which is also difficult. So yeah, it's it's a bit hard, but the rules are the same for everyone. So I quite like the fact that it moves people around, so it creates a little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. Rather than yeah, everyone yeah. being stuck to the same places, and yeah. like I said, if you yeah. if you had a bad qualifying, then you're not sort of hampered for the whole weekend. You've actually got yeah. a mm -hmm. chance to recover it. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for the viewer, it's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, one of the name, Ryan Vickers, I think he would have won what, Ride of the Round, wouldn't he, if it hadn't been for that pesky Tommy Bryan. Yeah, out. yeah. First, yeah. fifth, third. It feels a bit, it feels a bit bad of me to say this, but it, it kind of feels like Ryan was gifted that first win. I think he would have rather seen the chequered flag than it be, you know, caught, called off early and then given half points. You'd probably agree with me that you'd rather finish a race by a chequered flag than a red flag and then not a restart. But you still you've got to be you've got to be in the lead you've got to be in it to win it so yeah, it you know, you've is, got to be it, out the front to win it haven't you? It's kind of a shame for Ryan. I'm, I've got no doubt he's going to mm. win more, so it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, to get your first win, but it to be de declared in that way, in that way, yeah, as crap, half points, as mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a difficult one. Mm. Um, yeah. Because he did win it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and, and deservedly and as as, so. He was and, up there. Exactly. It, it wasn't like he was. <laughs> no, no. The, the yeah, leader yeah. crashed out and he inherited a, the win. A cut short race is always hard because the riders always plan their races. I was sort of planning my race in a certain way that I think I had more mm -hmm. to give. Maybe Ryan had more to give and maybe Danny had because they were in the mm -hmm. race together. So maybe they had more as well and the yeah. race would have panned out exactly the same or. Do you know what I mean? So. You definitely can't take it away from him. It's mm. just a shame for him, I think, because mm. he's been at, going at it a while, and it's it's cool to have a different winner. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but he still won it. Yeah, I think the biggest knot for me, and I've got a lot of custard pie on my face here, is Brooksy. Custard pie. Yeah, well, I, I, it's his track in it. You know as well as I do, it's his it's his track. And when he went out in FP1 and was top of the session, I was like, yep, yeah, got it made. This weekend's his, and then, yeah. Is something just went completely wrong. I mean, the last race he was he has unlucky, wasn't boxed it? in and yeah. crashed, and you know the wet race he went backwards. Yeah, twelfth and ninth. Like and you then. say, he never really ridden it in the rain, so the, it's, the, the wet know. race was a strange one because he qualified second or third. Mm. So yeah, he was on I the front row, third, I, I think he was. Didn't really understand that mm. one, but yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, because Josh is class act, obviously. So. Yeah, especially around there as well. He's, yeah, yeah, he's the, he's the man around there. So yeah, that's probably my biggest knot, unfortunately. And where others um, fail to sort of make the most of it, uh, Tommy and Glenn made the most of it, didn't they? Because I'm just looking at the championship we've got in front of us. You've got Car Ride, Josh Brooks, Leon Haslam, Jason Halloran, some bloke called Christian. But you, <laughs> other than you, those other guys really missed out, didn't they? They didn't have a consistently good weekend, whereas 
the top two decades did, and, and you clearly did. Um, so yeah, so, but it makes us up for the championship, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is great. Yeah, in a way, I mean, Tommy at the moment is, is riding with some amount of confidence. And God, he's happy, isn't he? Every weekend he's extending the championship lead, yeah. and that'll be, he'll have his eyes on that mm -hmm. more than anything else. Um, probably difficult for Glenn at the moment, because he's, he's so near and yet losing points every, every round, mm -hmm. which, is, which is difficult, and they're, and they're two big characters, mm. so I'm sure that they might play things out, happy families, or they might not in certain circumstances, but I'm sure they both want to win, and they both want to beat each other, and they're those sort of characters, so, um, yeah. yeah, it's interesting, I think those two are going to have a, not a fist fight, but you know, like they're going to fight between themselves quite a lot. I was actually surprised Glenn didn't put more of a move on Tommy, especially in the last race. He was very forceful with a lot of other people um, and then got to Tommy and wasn't. Whether that's by virtue that Tommy was better in certain places so Glenn didn't have the opportunity or whether he was just a bit cautious. I don't know which one of the two, so it's unfair of me to say. But it just seems a bit different that he mm -hmm. raced. It seemed like he raced a bit differently with... Maybe they've, they've been told, riders. maybe they've been had oh, yeah, a stern I, word beforehand. But, but as I said, it are you been, talking it, about a, a Yamaha rider with a number 22 on it? Is that what we're talking about here? Or? Well, no, I, don't, I didn't see any of that until no. like, oh, we've got a group chat and it kicked off in that about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that I want to see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, the, the, the whole race, the, some of the moves were quite strong. And yeah. Stuff like that. There was nothing bad. There was, don't, don't get me wrong, there was no bad moves, mm -hmm. but there was, um, yeah, there was plenty of force in, employed. It just. Um, as I said, but the reason that it, maybe he didn't put the move on Tommy is because maybe Tommy didn't give him the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I've got to leave that as a bit of a caveat because mm -hmm. it's only right. fair. Yeah. Speaking of Tommy Bridewell, Mr. Burton, you went to speak yeah. to him, didn't you, after his uh, successful weekend? So we'll cut to that in just a second. But beforehand, I want to say thank you very much, Christian, for joining us. And best of luck at Thruxton and well, for the rest of the season. Me. Yeah, team's home round, so um, I'd better pull my socks up and do something good. Let's do that, mate. <laughs> No, the opposite of Thruxton. Is it? Yeah. It's the opposite. You don't want yeah, to knock your tyre up. Don't wreck your tyre. Do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> it's Tommy Ryder. Tommy, welcome to Bennett's Back Social. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank Leading you. in here, championship leader. Must be really happy with this weekend's work. <laughs> really happy. <laughs> um, I am. No, all in all seriousness. Um, I'm, I'm happy because I have moment, like the momentum, but also it's um, it's not forced. You know, I'm just enjoying my racing. I'm enjoying working with such a great team, such a great environment in the garage, um, and just absorbing every moment, but also adapting to every pressure, every every thing that's chucked in everything. Everything that is chucked at me, um, I feel so strong that I can adapt um, and fix and, and go again, you know. So um, I'd be lying if I, I felt a bit gutted after yesterday in the, in the wet. Um, we know where the issues were. It was a few few issues that that's I felt, you know, hampered me. Um, but hey, you know, I, I, you look forwards, not backwards. So uh, yeah, five, ra five race wins out of the last six is, is something that I honestly have, have only ever dreamed of. Um, the championship lead again is, is obviously extending, but it's not something I'm focused on because uh, honestly, um, anything can happen, you know, and, and it's a long season. But in the same aspects, it, it's always preferable to be in the driving seat, um, and that's where we are. So, yeah, credit to the Beer Monster PBM Ducati team there. They're just uh, an outstanding team to work, work with, um, and honestly, it's just a pleasure to be able to, to get these results for them. In, in, in it just, it's just testament to their hard work that you know, that they put in behind the scenes. Talk to us about the second race today, because really, you were a long way back, and afterwards, when we were all up at the podium, you looked at me and said, that was all right. You, yeah. you must have yeah. been fairly chuffed with that, because um, it shows how strong, really, you and this package are. Yeah, yeah. I just adapted such a different approach to my races. Um, I love overtaking, obviously. Um, it sounds stupid to say, but honestly, I just I get I used to get very agitated if I if I was was in the same position for too long. Where um, now I feel like I can analyse other riders, analyse other bikes, and think right, just wait um, and just tick the laps off. Uh, honestly, I was if I I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be truthful that uh, when I was sat behind Christian and I think it was Danny at the start, 
um, I was very comfortable, very comfortable. The lap times were still strong, but it was it was very comfortable for me. When I got in behind Christian, um, I I saw uh, Glenn was behind me, and I knew what his tactic would be to, to follow me through. Um, and honestly, I also knew when I would get to the front that I could push push the pace a bit faster. But um, he's on the exact same package. He has my data to look at, um, and you know that's what it's about as a team. Because honestly, we were struggling at Nokia when I had his data to look at. So yeah, I knew it was going to be a tough tough race. But seeing plus zero on my pit board, um, it's it's different pressure that I actually quite enjoy just purely for the fact is if I can win with a lead I can win from the front I can win from coming behind it all it does is is add confidence to me so when I'm winning with plus zero and it's my teammate on the bike on, on the my pit board on the same bike and I can outride him um, it just again adds more confidence so yeah it's great to great to get another one two for, 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 the, for the team and for Ducati and um, yeah just really really proud of my achievements at the minute are you I'm going to have to ask the question anyway. Go on, then. Beating your teammate and convincingly beating your teammate, is that giving you extra confidence and motivation heading into what is your home round and a, a big round of the season? Woo! <laughs> Bennett's, get the Bennett's, rider Bennett's around, round the rider there. around, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, back to the teammate question. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so back to the teammate motivation. question. Um, <laughs> honestly, no, because. There's not one rider on this grid that I don't, I, I don't, I, I never would underestimate anyone. Um, so if it's not Glenn at my heels, it's Jason, it's Danny Kent, it's Christian Eden, it's Josh Brooks, whoever, and they're all different bikes. So going into to trucks in my home race, honestly, I know it's not going to be quite as easy, but um, I feel like the momentum is with us um, and we can just carry that on. Let's talk about Thruxton then, home round. Coming into there on what is the best bike on the grid, let's be honest, it's won the last five out of six races. That's because of me! Well, <laughs> no, I'm only yeah, joking. Yeah, I suppose, no. but it, you must be looking forward to that because it is your home round. And let's be fair, you, it, it's not treated you very nice over no. the years. So Bir birdie, birdie, I said, to, I said to Paul, I was like, oh, I said, we've got Thruxton, that's my one Achilles heel. Um, and he said, no, it ain't. And I was like, nah, it's sort of his Paul. And he's like, you'll win there. And I was like, oh, I wish I had your confidence. Um, but I think that's where the team is so good because they do get your confidence up, you know. There's no reason why I can't win there. I've never had phenomenal success there. Um, honestly, I learn every year I go there, but how to ride trucks in is so unique. It is beyond, just, I don't know. Um, Glenn's been strong there in the past, so I'm looking forward to seeing how he approaches his 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 uh, lap there, so I can check his data. But again, like you say, um, I think with momentum is such a big thing, and carrying that momentum makes life a lot easier. Um, I believe it's possible to win that. I genuinely do. But we also seen last year how good the Yamaha is there because of the tyre. But the Ducati V4R has taken such a step this year with with tyre up because honestly, the bike is. It's not day and night different, but in the previous years, it was always tyre life I suffered with, um, where now tyre life is, is, is on our side. So it just makes the, the end of the race a lot more enjoyable instead of me kind of holding my breath, you know, thinking, oh no, we've got another six laps. Now, I, honestly, I could have carried on with my with my tyres. I could have carried on probably another 10 laps genuinely then, um, because you look, the bike is very rider friendly that you learn how to manage the, the spin and um, and still make the lap time. Finally then, is this the strongest you've ever felt uh, in a season? Because I've yeah. never seen you smile so much. I've ne <laughs> I, I'm being honest, yes. I've never seen you look this Be strong. honest. Honestly. You're being honest, yeah. so I've got to I'm be honest. Yeah. Um, I am, I am riding great, um, but I, I do want to put that, I always ride and give 110%. Um, no matter what scenario, what situation, where I am, I will always give 110%. I think the thing now is I have a team that that is able to do all of the hard work and all I need to focus on is staying healthy, fit and just riding the bike. And it honestly, it takes so much pressure off your shoulders. I'm not thinking about anything else bar going around in a circle. Um, and it just makes, yeah, makes you happier. So a happy rider is a fast rider. It's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. Um, and it's just, just the position I'm in at the minute. But also, I feel where I feel really good is I don't feel complacent. I know we're going to have hard times, 
but in really enjoy these these good times because uh, in the past I've been my own enemy of finishing second, finishing third, but but riding well and really miserable. Where you know if if second was on the cards in that race or if that was second for me, um, it's still a great weekend, you know. But uh, yeah, the wins are. I can't honestly. The to 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 tell you the truth, when I cross a line and I win, the um, the giggles, the giggles I have in my helmet. <laughs> I'd love to put a microphone in there because it's. Um, I even make myself yeah. laugh. We better not put. A microphone no, in I don't there. even. It won't be honestly, I don't even swear that much. Really, that's a lie. I do well, a little bit, but um, <laughs> yeah, just just in a great great position and a great great time with with the team. Spot on, Tommy Bravo. Congratulations and good luck at the next round. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Welcome back. We've had uh, a, a replacement for Christian Eden. Uh, Lee Bob Jackson. Lee, thanks for joining us. No worries. So we're at Cadwell Park at Bennett's Track Day. You and I were both hoping to get some spin some laps. I hate that phrase, spin some laps. I never really understood. Anyway, we're, we were trying to ride on the track, but the rain seems to uh, not be playing ball. Anyway, enough of that. Um, you're the only rider, uh, you don't need me to tell you this, Lee's the only rider who scored in every round so far. And tell the whole tale of your championship though, does it, so far? Not really. I mean, I had James Whitten interview me on Saturday at Brands, which I thought would be a massive curse towards the weekend, <laughs> having said you score points in every race. So at some point over the weekend, I was just expecting a little crash, mm. just because obviously the, just the, he said the it. Mentioned, <laughs> yeah, it's been mentioned a few times. But if we're, if we're counting scoring one, two, three points here and there, then yeah, we've obviously scored points every race this year, which mm. is it's, it's a nice thing that we've got some consistency, but it's not consistently near the front. So we're getting there, though. And like last year, what well, can you put your finger on it? Are you you know, clearly there's no there's no uh, you're not you're not not trying. You know what I mean? You're, I suppose the biggest change is the swing arm, isn't it? Yeah, I mean For if you? you're looking at myself and the team, obviously new teammate bikes looks virtually the same. We but we have got the KRT swinging arm this year, which as the guy from KRT said, you, the rider knowing he's got a factory part should give him half a second, <laughs> but it doesn't always work like that when you don't quite have the feeling, but. I, uh, the bike is good, you know, when the bike's not slow, we've, we've worked really hard to make me have the feeling I need and the start of the year was tough because it was chucked straight in and we didn't get to test it properly, mm, so right. Silverstone was always going to be tough and obviously 53 second lap was never going to be easy, but then going to Alton after that, obviously after previous there last mm -hmm. year I expected yeah, yeah. to do a lot better than I did and that was tough for me going away from there. Not only was I way down the order, I mean the, the field wasn't as fast this year for whatever reason. And, but in my own head, I felt like if I just had the bike I had last year, then I should have been close to the front because the lap time that everyone was doing would have come a bit relatively easier for me. But it's been a bit of a tricky start. Donington has been my best weekend with a fourth, fifth and sixth. But other than that, we've just been just shy of the top five all, all the time. And just mainly for me, it's not just a position, it's being how far away from the leader at the mm. end of the race. You know, yeah, yeah. Some races were 10 seconds behind and then by the end of the weekend we're, f we're three, four seconds behind, which is obviously an improvement. But after the run of form we had last year as a team, it's just a bit, um, bit tough at the minute to understand what's going on and really dial in the feeling that I'm lacking and you know, just getting myself at the sharp end, really. What about Thruxton? Is that going to change your fortune? Have you got any magic powder to dust over it? or I mean, What have you got in line? Have you, have you got anything changing? Are you, are you possibly. There's possibly things changing the pipeline that would hopefully bring some more consistency. Last year we were pretty strong there, like 4th, 5th and 6th, 4th, 5th and 5th, and probably best of the rest last year after the three Yamahas up the road. And it, Duxton, as everyone knows, isn't easy. You go there, you do three laps with a brand new tyre, it feels great, and then for the next 17, you're managing nothing and mm. trying to stop wheel spin. And not only are you trying to do that, but the other 20 guys around you are doing the same. So it's not an easy race. And at one point last year, I remember dropping back to 11th and thinking, oh God, I'm in trouble. And then just purely for the fact that I knew I had a great bike underneath me and the consistency, I worked my way back through to fifth. So hopefully we've got something that we can go back to this year that will put us in a, a great position. and. Almost, I'm kind of putting myself on the uh, on the frying pan and almost saying, if you know, if it's not the bike, it's me. So mm -hmm. I'm basically putting myself out there to make a big change and try and prove that, you know, I've still got it. Basically, is that a case of reverting back to the super swing arm then? Possibly, yeah. No, no, I think the swing arm may be going in. It's it's hard because obviously the team spent a lot of money this year yeah. to buy these factory parts and. Yeah, but if it's if it's not working, it's there's no point in using it. Yeah, exactly. And we're like halfway through the year, and yeah. as BSB is getting to 
a time of year where there's rumours teams Crunch are leaving, time, yeah. Yeah. rumours people swapping teams and there isn't actually that many rides going and for me, I, you know, I'd be very gutted if I got to the last round or end of the mm. season with no ride available in Superbikes because I feel like I can still do a good job, you know. Mm. But the weekend Friday went really well and, you know, just missing out on doing my first 24 lap of brands and then the race wasn't bad, 7th and 8th, but obviously the track conditions changed massively after the wet Saturday, so I don't think that I'm in a, a place to put myself down into Superstock just yet, which is not putting that class down at all. And, you know, the, that class is now fast with mm -hmm. the rule changes, but I feel like I've still got years in Superbikes to fight for and, you know, fight for the championship. You've not changed your approach, you said earlier on, but in terms of your fitness and in terms of your lap times for everywhere else this year, you're still on a par with last year? Uh, yeah, I'd say the, other than because of track conditions and different variables, we've been fairly close and mm. I could understand if it was two, three seconds off, but I was also 20th, you know, that would be a little bit different. We're, you know, we're not as high up as we want, but we're not as that far away. It's minimal, you know, in BSB now, the championship's so close, it, a bad day can make you look really bad. Sure. And I don't believe that I'm in a worse place personally myself, fitness-wise, you know, yeah, yeah. riding the bike. I feel like we've made steps over the winter with a few new parts that have also helped towards that, but just the, the main one, the swinging arm, which is quite a big you know, key point to the bike, is just making us lack something that we just really need to help us fight, fight higher up. For the likes of him and me and, and everybody else watching, uh, the, the close battles, the variables in, in, in who's winning and who's podium and who's top sixing, makes it for an exciting championship and exciting racing. But of course, for you riders, that's actually not the case, is it? You want that consistency, you want to be top six every single time you don't want that the the what makes it interesting for, yeah. for for the viewers you don't want that at all it's like double-edged sword right yeah for sure especially when it's so close because if you have got an advantage but you're lacking that then your the advantage has just gone completely the opposite way with mm. everyone covered by one second so when the your advantage gets taken away from you and you for myself i i kind of pride myself on having good tire life and being strong at the end of a race and at the moment when just lacking that and when everyone's battling first three or four laps of the race and you're just getting pushed down the order because you don't have the feeling, it makes the race ten times harder. And mm -hmm. Obviously, like you say, it's great racing for the public because there's about five or six of us, ten of us that can win a race mm. in every, every opportunity, wet or dry. So that's great to watch and week in, week out, you're probably battling with a different guy or you know, you're, you're battling with the same guys, but one minute you guys are first and second, next week you're ninth and tenth. Mm. You know, the, the field is so strong and on Friday at Brands Hatch, I think it was covered by like 1.7 seconds mm. to like 20th, yeah. it was, if not closer than that, it's just unreal and, you know, people further down the order with maybe smaller teams are still only a second off the factory Ducati, the factory mm. Kawasaki, so for that, for that reason, it's great racing and, you know, such a close championship. Yeah, I love it when I'm right, I knew it was a swing out, love it. When <laughs> I'm right. So if we look at this weekend then, um, ahead of Thruxton, what, what are you expecting, not just from yourself, but also from the whole grid. Uh, it, last year it was a Yamaha circuit. Is it going to be a bit of a Ducati show again, do you think? I don't know, you know, like last year for me I felt strong on weekend. Obviously didn't have the out and out pace to go with the Yamahas, but there was, I was fourth, fifth. The BMW of Pete Higgins mm. was fourth or fifth all weekend. I know that Andrew was good there a few years ago on the Honda, yeah. which I don't know if he's going to be back in time on the Honda, but I think it's still wide open. The Yamahas will be strong and I don't know how strong they will be this year. Kyle struggled at Thruxton last year on the Yamaha, but the other three guys were way up the road. So, mm -hmm. who knows? I mean, it, we all, we've all got to use the harder tyre. Yeah, I was just got, about yeah, to mention that, yeah. We've all got to run the SC0, which, again, some people don't like that, but obviously we're all in the same boat there. Mm -hmm. So, it's literally wide open. I couldn't possibly say who's going to be fast and who's not, because, you know, we can all do a lap time at Thruxton to go fast because you know you've got two laps to do it mm -hmm. and as soon as that's done you you know for qualifying you might as well just pull straight in yeah you've got your two laps and then once you if you've done the best job you can you might as well pull in but for the race i think it's about one keeping yourself smooth relaxed on the bike but also just not putting too much input into mm -hmm. the tires into the bike and just trying to not get bashed around for 15 laps and then the last five laps try and come back through strong how much of an emphasis do you put on in free practice race runs then? Especially at Thruxton, because like you say, you can go out and do two Banzai laps, absolutely fine, but to do 20 laps and manage your tyre is difficult. Yeah, it's hard because, like I say, literally three laps anyway, your tyre is gone. Mm. So you've almost got to go straight out, do some fast laps and just stay in that rhythm for as long as you can. Yeah. And then that will mimic a race run, but 
irregardless if you do that or not, the tire is dropping instantly. Mm -hmm. like the, the, the grip is unbelievable, and in the wet, you can be literally like four or five seconds off. So, whether you mean to, it's hard because obviously, with the way the format is, there's a lot of people maybe not too interested in going through Q1 or Q2 now. Yeah. So, FP1 for me, I'll just go out and try and put as many laps in as possible purely just to see, you know, with track temperature and just purely see how much tyre life does get worn because even though your tyre is wearing away, if you can improve that for the race, then that's going to be the main aim up until qualifying is just minimise how much yeah. tyre you wear, really. Shall we have a look at last year's highlights? Because it was a hell of a well, three races, wasn't it? People want to be reminded of it, so yeah, why not? Yeah, so here's 2022's uh, Bennett's British Superbike races from Thruxton. It was disaster for Andy Irwin at the start of the Bennett's BSB eBay sprint race. He was supposed to start on the front row, but a mechanical failure meant he couldn't Here get the Cinetic BMW going. Jason O'Halloran was on pole position number 22, then alongside Peter Hickman. But it was a rocket ship start for Glenn Irwin on the second row. Number two, the winner of the opening three races in Silverstone, went the long way round the outside at turn one and led then into turns two and three ahead of O'Halloran, who immediately got himself back through. Peter Hickman was third at this point. It was a good start from Jackson in fourth, but there was drama at the end of the opening lap in the final chicane, just in the background there. Luke Mossy coming down and being carried away. Chrissy Rouse went down also, and unfortunately, it looked like on that lap, we also lost Danny Kent as well. Fantastic shots of the riders flying through church. Bradley Ray made his move on Peter Hickman to move up into second as they all saw Jason Halloran disappearing off into the distance. And then Taron McKenzie uh, made his move as well on the FHO Racing BMW rider as Brad Ray fought his way up to try and challenge Jason Halloran for victory. In the background, uh, Glenn Irwin was going to be making a move on Peter Hickman shortly, but as we got to the closing stages, McKenzie and Ray got themselves embroiled in a proper ding-dong scrap. A little apology there from Taron McKenzie, but it wasn't over there. As they tried to fight for victory, they ended up getting themselves messed up and just a battle for second in the end. Brad Ray had the look up the inside into the club chicane. They both went deep, but on the cutback, McKenzie took the inside line. And as you'll see here, there was just a moment slide for Brad Ray, a photo finish. And ultimately, McKenzie taking second. But it's another win for the Osho. Six wins in 2022 for the number 22. Race two of Bennett's British Superbike began with drama for Storm Stacey, who unfortunately, the chain came off and they tried to get him back out again, ready to start race two. He started from pit lane. It was Brad Ray on pole position, though, on the Rich Energy OMG Racing Yamaha and two McCams Yamahas. And it was the McCams Yamahas that got the whole shot. Most notably, Jason O'Halla and the championship leader with Glenn Irwin in fourth and Pete Eggman in fifth. Kyle Ride was up at the front to begin with, getting involved with Tom Sykes and Leon Haslam, but would ultimately fade away as the race went on. There was drama for Chrissy Rouse at the club chicane as he made his way there through there. Ryan Vickers, unfortunately, a faller as well. And adding to the DNF list, sadly, for the FHO Racing BMW rider. But then things started really heating up in race two of BSP on lap 15 as the Yamaha started to pull away from Peter Hickman. Glenn Irwin almost made contact with Tom Sykes and Lee Jackson. O'Halloran was leading at this point from Brad Ray and Taz McKenzie. But then Taz made his move going up the inside of Jason O'Halloran and Brad Ray wanted a piece of the action too. Ray, Taz McKenzie and O'Halloran. As the laps unfolded, an epic battle between the three Yamaha riders. The favoured move into church from O'Halloran. Ray coming back through as well on the approach to Club Corner and on the final lap. There was smoke billowing out everywhere. No one knew who was going to get it. Brilliant slipstream from Taz McKenzie. They couldn't watch down in the McCam's Yamaha garage. But ultimately, as they made their way through the chicane, watch this from Jason O'Halloran. He just goes off the inside. A slight slide from Taz McKenzie. A photo finish, but a win for O'Halloran from McKenzie and Brad Ray. 
Bennett's BSB race three. Well, after a barnstormer earlier on, what did we have in store with the three Yamaha riders? On the front row again, Brad Ray on pole, looking for first victory of the weekend. And would it be a treble for Jason O'Halloran? As the lights went out, it was his teammate Taz McKenzie, the defending champion, that got the whole shot ahead of his teammate O'Halloran with Brad Ray in third. It was also a good start from Lee Jackson and Kyle Ride. A couple of corners down, and there were four Yamahas out front. Kyle Ride going very strong after a difficult weekend. Further back, there was drama for Dean Harrison. He was clipped by Tom Sykes and Ryan Vickers into the club chicane, losing his visor in the process. Peter Hickman had early work to do as he battled uh, Lee Jackson, and then ultimately Peter Hickman to try and get up into... Sorry, uh, Kyle Wright to get up into the top four. Josh Brooks, a miserable weekend ended for him as he pulled out with a mechanical failure. And for some time, Taz McKenzie was leading the race. A good 13, 14 laps without being challenged. Kyle Wright then went down over at turn four. It's been a tough weekend for the rider known as Youth. There was lots of paint swapping going on between Danny Kent and Lee Jackson as well. Peter Hickman was gutted. He was just in touch with the Yamahas, but an electrical failure meant he had to pull out of the race. And then the battle began for the race win. O'Halloran made his move. Brad Ray got in on the action as well. And the countdown was on to see who would be victorious in the third and final race. As we got to the closing stages, a big moment for O'Halloran meant that he had no longer a chance of winning the race. This move from Taz McKenzie, though, into Church got it done. And across the line, it was another photo finish. McKenzie holds on to win at Thruxton. Race three ahead of Brad Ray and Jason O'Halloran. Well, if we have racing as half as close and as good as that this year, I think we're still on for a winner, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, Kawasaki Man, can you talk to me about, or us, about uh, the new car? Let me get this right. The Kawasaki, no, Kawasaki British, British Super Team, Team Championship. Team. Yeah. So that's new for 2024, isn't it? And we've all, you we've under all, pressure, really. You, you must know this. everything about this. Yeah. Come on. Well, it's, it's <laughs> weird for me to like talk about British Super Teams because obviously when I started out, it was the, the Aprilia Super yeah. Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously never run alongside British Championship, mm. which I think, I don't know whether it did back in the 2000s or not, but obviously it's great to have a class that's coming back into BSB that's probably a one-make series and actually aims directly at the young kids to you know, progress, progress that because I think at the moment British talent is just lacking a little bit and with that in, with that in mind, obviously having a one-make series, it kind of brings out the best out of the rider, not the bike and it's great to see that Kawasaki have brought out not only a, a new bike but also something that was probably a stepping stone for people way back in the 90s, 90s mm. early 2000s, which I never rode a ZX400 but, you know, the new bike looks great and I think having seen some of it race in America already, then it should be a great class. Cool little bikes, aren't they? And, mm -hmm. But they're quite yeah, pricey. Yeah. What's, what's the season going to cost these young ones? Because, they, again, the age range is ooh, 14 to 20, am I right? Something like that. I think Ross, 15 yeah, to 20. We'll find out think, soon. Yeah, 15 yeah. to 20, which then, is obviously, I think there's a new class as well, the Super Twin class, mm. which will, again, help step onto that. And the, mm. the age and the, the hopefully the crossover won't be too big for the, the likes of the young kids. So it gives us a Honda British Talent Cup, a BMW F900 Cup, a Kawasaki Super Teen Championship. What's mm. next? All one make series. Yeah. Good. Well, uh, Bertie, you spoke to Ross Burridge, didn't you, yeah. uh, from Kawasaki UK about the um, the new championship. So here it is. Ross, uh, first of all, welcome to Bike Social. Thanks for joining us. New series announced this weekend at the Kawasaki uh, Super Team Cup, I believe it's called. Just talk us through it, the reasons for it, uh, and really what it's going to entail. Yeah, sure, no problem at all. Thanks for having us for a start. Um, yeah, basically new series for 2024, which is called the Kawasaki British Super Team Series. One really important thing for us is that word British is going to be a full British Championship, which is great. Um, the reason for it really, I mean, the overall reason being Team Green is all about taking on young riders, developing them throughout their career, and hopefully seeing them all the way through. Riders like Danny Buckland in the past come with us right from the beginning all the way through to Superbike Rider. And we wanted to kind of create a platform that would allow riders to get on board as early as possible and start that journey. So that's what this class is all about. It's about giving young riders the opportunity to, uh, to start their career in British Superbikes, basically. Obviously, on the uh, fantastic new Ninja ZX4RR. So just talk to us, uh, to us a bit more about the series, so uh, age limits or anything like that. So, so how is it going to run, really? Yeah, OK, so it's uh, one-make class, obviously. Uh, it's going to be for 15 to 20-year-olds. 
um, available to anyone who wants to, to, to join it, obviously within that uh, age range. So for example, if you've won Junior Super Sport Championship this year, it doesn't matter, you can still eligible to join. Um, it's gonna take place over eight rounds, uh, including a support race at the World Superbike Championship round at Donington Park, which is great. Um, and yeah, really, really looking forward to it getting going, to be honest. Talk to us a bit more about the bike. Obviously, it's sat behind you at the minute. Talk yeah. to us a little bit more about it, because when it was announced, there was a lot of uh, excitement about it, bringing the ZX4 back into the market. Yeah, exactly. You know, away from racing, it, it's great, obviously, to have that sort of 400cc and 94 back again. You know, it revs over 15,000 RPM, and we've already had it on the dyno, and trust me, it, it sounds fantastic. Um, so uh, yeah, as soon as we saw it on the production plan, to be honest, you know, while it was still a secret to the public, we thought, you know what, this class is, this bike is going to be in a in a class of its own on the road. Let's make it in a in a class of its own on track as well. So um, yeah, spoke to Stuart Higgs, and uh, you know, after um, only a brief chat, really, Stuart was was fully on board. The guys at MSVR have been have been great in in allowing us to to make this happen, and uh, yeah, should be good. What are the plans for the series? Is it for it to be a, a, a long, sort of multi multi-year deal, shall we say, or is it going to be uh, maybe a three or four year plan? What's, what's the kind of ideas for it? To be honest with you, at the moment, it's, Take it's, year on year. it's, it's year by year. It's, it's just 2024 we're talking about at the moment, but clearly it's not it's not a one-year bike. The bike's going to be around for, for quite some time. So, uh, yeah, we hope that we can keep this going for as long as possible with the series and you know help give as many young riders as possible the chance to, to build their career with Team Green and with Kawasaki UK. Fantastic. Well, Ross, thanks very much for your time and hopefully it provides some really exciting racing next year. No problem. Thanks very much. What an exciting championship that looks, and I personally cannot wait to ride that ZX4. Are you going to have a go, do you think? Uh, you get, yeah, I'd like to have a go. Yeah, I mean, I did actually ask at Brands if the bike that there was on display was uh, Me too. usable. <laughs> just, just to, well, if were, I mean, it was like the big reveal at Brands, so I thought, why not? Let's see if I can get out on it. But just, you know, it wouldn't have made any difference, but just to get it out on the circuit. Demo again, lap. But, yeah, that's exactly, good. yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll see. Bertie, you, uh, you've got some more info yeah, on that, Yeah, right? just a little a bit of info that we might not have covered in that, um, that the price of the base package will be under 12 grand plus VAT, um, and all bikes will be built by MSS Performance, so Nick Morgan and the guys down there, uh, and it will feature sealed engines and a controlled standard electronics to ensure a level playing field. Ooh. So a little bit like the F900 Cup is at the moment. Yeah, promises for a really close championship. Good. All right, Thruxton this weekend. And uh, Mr. B, what have we got going on for Bike Social members? Anything special? Uh, we have got something which is quite unique. So we've got a unique viewing area. Um, I'm not entirely sure exactly where it's going to be. The last time I heard it was at the last corner. Then I've got told something today that it's going to be at church. So I'm not sure. Take that as it is. Mm -hmm. If it's at church, great. If it's at the last corner, great. You're still going to see some mega action. Um, so, sorry to jump in, but church will be a mega place to church, watch. Yeah. It's it's literally uh, not many people get to no, go out not, there, no anyway. access to the public down there so mm -hmm. you're definitely in a great spot yeah so if uh, if you've entered the competitions you should have already had your emails sent through to you to find out what you've won with if it be hospitality pillion lap safety car lap grid walks that kind of stuff um but also this weekend like i say we've got that unique viewing area uh we've also got the priority pit walk as well so you can get in to pester lee 10 minutes before everybody else which Lee really enjoys. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's as always, it's just going to be a, a, a mega weekend. Hopefully the weather plays plays fair like it did last year. Just a little bit cooler because it was roasting last year, oh, wasn't it? Scorching. Yeah. yeah. Good. Fine. Thank you, Lee. Thanks no. for joining us. Thanks for your time. Um, Is it rainy still? No, we might get out no, this afternoon. you might get out this afternoon. Lad. Thank you so much for joining us. Any thoughts, comments, queries, uh, anything more you want to know about uh, from, from anywhere in the paddock? Uh, support classes, uh, just leave your thoughts in the comments section below and we will look forward to catching up with you next time after Thruxton. See you then.